was a depression like you never saw. And I felt very fortunate that I could come to Boulder City and go to work on Hoover Boulder Dam, whichever one you prefer to call it. Work started here in 1931, and the dam was dedicated on September the 30th of 1935 by Franklin Roosevelt. What are you gonna do with the water in the Colorado River? Well, the engineers of the United States Bureau of Reclamation who designed this dam had worked out the solution to simply bypass the entire Colorado River around to the canyon wall. Of course, the first thing you have to do is get the river out of your way. We made tunnels through the rock. One of the critical times comes when we finally have to get that monstrous river into our tunnels. And get it out of our way so we can get down to bedrock and, and start the construction of a dam. And the river is, is not very anxious to change its channel. As you gradually squeeze it down, you can throw the Taj Mahal in there and the river moves it on down river. And what a thrill it was when that water gushed through those big diversion tunnels. And we went down through the desert to an overlook and we could see it being constructed. My father had me up on his shoulders looking out because we were looking down over that and it was just terrifying but fascinating. It looked like a bunch of little ants, a million little ants running down there and a huge truck. Why, they were so tiny. The high scalers, they got $5 a day. If they had guts enough to wrestle a jackhammer up there, five sixty. So when a shot would go off up there, of course the high scalers were cleared out of that particular area where the shot was going to go. Now just to see these high scalers work off a bosun chair attached to a rope, some of those guys could spring around like monkeys. And the basket that was being lowered down into the canyon, oh I wanted to get on that so bad and ride down, it just looked like a barrel of fun. We just changed shifts and I heard the swish swash of an air hose. Here he comes, tumbling, 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 tumbling. He looked like a little ant from way up there. And he lit quite close to where I was standing. And I made a mad dash over to this guy. But there's nothing anybody could do. But along come a hard-boiled superintendent. Trucks were backing up. He said to me, what are you going to do with all these blankety-blank trucks? I said, there's a man killed over here. Well, get a moving. This guy can't hurt anybody. Keeping those trucks moving was more important than anything. You know, we got to get this dam built. I just bring that out as to how highball this job was. It was on June 6, 1933, that the first bucket of concrete was placed in the very lowest of the dam forms, 135 feet below the level where a few months previously had flowed the unchallenged Colorado River. As bucket after bucket of concrete was dumped into the forms, the plan of the structure became apparent. Getting that concrete down into that uh, narrow canyon in the 120 degree heat, and, uh, I just marveled that, uh, that man was able to do a thing like that. The average high temperature was 119 degrees, 140 in the tunnels. In the first month, heat stroke killed a worker every two days. They put 3,250,000 cubic yards of concrete in there in only two years, and that's enough concrete to build a highway all the way from San Francisco to New York City. It had much, 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 much more concrete in it than the Empire State Building. I mean, dozens of times more. It was solid, except for some corridors inside it, some elevators. It's absolutely solid. 726 feet high, 660 feet thick at the bottom. It's only about 45 feet thick at the top. The best way from up here I've found to help everybody judge size is if you look at the vehicles driving back and forth across the top of it. If you happen to see any 18-wheel trucks, tour buses, or motor homes as we're going by, you'll notice they don't even appear large enough to be children's toys. The big turbines, they fascinated me. 
I could hear them whirring, and they were so big. And my father and mother said, the water's coming in, it's making electricity. Power, that's what I feel down in the dam. I feel it, the dam itself is a powerful structure. God, look what it's holding back. Imagine what a reservoir the size of Lake Mead weighs. Imagine the weight. And all that weight wants to go downriver. It doesn't have any other passion but to go downriver. And the only thing stopping it is this thumbnail, this 700-foot thumbnail. As I stood on that transformer deck and looked at that uh, magnificent concrete structure, I couldn't help but thinking that here is something uh, greater than the pyramids, it's greater than the Sphinx, because it's not a monument to the dead. This is a monument to the living. The dam is alive, and I know it gives life. I had to stop and throw up the doors. Wow, look at that! Even a, a, a damn hater has to admire. I was tremendously impressed by that dam. When I first laid eyes on it, I felt like I had to get out of my car and kneel down and genuflect. Those engineers had built something not just immense, but really beautiful. $53 million Boulder Dam, highest in the world, is practically finished. All but a few of the remaining workers get their final paychecks from the stupendous... They topped it out in 1935, under budget and ahead of schedule, in the depths of a great drought and the Great Depression. Hoover Dam held back two years of the Colorado's flow in a hundred-mile reservoir so heavy it bent the Earth's crust creating its own tiny earthquakes. In the name of the people of the United States, to whom you, Bold and Am, are a symbol of greater things in the future, and in the honored presence of guests from many nations, I call you to life. was the greatest single source of electricity in the world. Its turbines would power the aircraft industry that helped defeat Hitler, would light up downtown Los Angeles and a hundred other cities. Its water would irrigate thousands of farms in California. Hoover Dam proved it could be done. It gave men the confidence to dam the Nile and Zambezi, the Rhine and the Yangtze. It also gave them confidence to plan dams for every single river in America. If anybody comes in the next several thousand years from outer space and they land there, they will know exactly what happened on this spot at that time just by reading the stars. On the edge of Hoover Dam is a mosaic star map. It shows the alignment of planets and stars in the heavens on September 30th, 1935 the day the dam was dedicated. It was designed to last thousands of years. The Anasazi Indians who farmed on the canyon floor. More than anything else, Hoover convinced us we could conquer the fatal dryness of the great American desert. I didn't really appreciate what this place was all about at 10 o'clock at night. I woke up in the morning and I opened the blinds and all I saw was barren desert, and I thought I'd landed on the moon. People who live in Arizona say that they love the desert, uh, and, and I think they do love it from the perspective of their air-conditioned home. If you talk to the frontier, the pioneer parties that wandered across it, trying to get someplace where they could live, where they could sustain themselves, it was the most terrifying experience imaginable. Many people died crossing the Great Basin, that emigrant trail is littered with grave sites. Everybody thinks about the Donner Party and how they died in the snow. But thousands of people died in the deserts. When Powell first warned against oversettling the arid west, other scientists argued that rain would follow the plow, that plowing and planting would agitate the air, cause clouds to form, and rain to fall. <laughs> 